Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing my favorites and fails. I have a few fails that really did not work out for me, so we'll get onto that at the end of the video, but I have a lot of favorites, which is why I wanted to do this. Just some skincare, hair care, makeup, even clothing. I've been loving a lot of things and I wanna share it with you guys. If you're new here, I would love you to subscribe and let's get into what I've been loving and what I didn't like. So my first favorite is actually a cleanser, which I'm really shocked about. I have my favorite cleansers that I use from Kate Somerville. I like the Milk Makeup one. I use the Curology one. This got sent to me in PR and I, for some reason, just really wanted to try it. This is new from Pharmacy. It's called the Whipped Greens Oil-Free Foaming Cleanser. It says it's an oil-free foaming cleanser that draws out dirt oil and impurities it's soap free creamy formula and I think that's what I've noticed about it is it is very creamy and it does lather I can feel the foaming aspect of it but it's quite moisturizing it doesn't strip my skin at all which is what I love about it it doesn't irritate my skin my skin just feels great after using it, it does have a scent and I think it is the same scent as their uh, melting balm yeah it has a green color and kind of like a citrusy scent I don't really know how to describe it but I've been enjoying this so much it really lathers and I think part of me feels like that's cleaning my face more even though I know logically it doesn't really matter and I feel like it's nice and clean but it's not dry or tight after using it there's no film left over so I'm really really impressed with this product I would definitely purchase this next up is a brush that I have been loving so much I went through recently my brushes and really decluttered like probably 100 brushes just because I feel like I had like 20 of each brush like bronzer highlight and then a million eye brushes that's a whole nother story but face brushes specifically, I don't need 20 highlighting brushes. Like I needed to get it down to like five or six that I really enjoy. And I keep reaching for this one from Sonia G. Sonia G is the high-end brush company or brand that I really see the difference. I see why they're so expensive. I keep reaching for them. A lot of them are out of stock on Beautylish, which is kind of frustrating because I've wanted to get multiples of certain brushes, but I can never get them because they're out of stock. But this is the Sculpt 2 brush. And at first I would look at this and be like, what would I use this for? But this is perfect for highlight. So today I use my Nabla Ozone, which is is like a total favorite of mine and this has the right stiffness to it to really just get the product on there and go right where you want to highlight it's not too flimsy it's not too thick you could totally use this to sweep like bronzer blush whatever but for me this is the perfect highlighting brush it just fits perfectly right on the cheekbone to give me that highlight that i'm looking for it's quick and i feel like i always want to reach for it something about how packed it is that highlight just gets right on it even my natasha denona the new highlight that i love i think it's called i need a nude or i need a glow that one's really hard pressed and some brushes can't pick it up but this one does effortlessly. So this definitely stands out to me. I know it's pricey, but it's a brush that's always in my top drawer. And whenever it's dirty, I'm like digging for it. My next favorite is an oldie, but a goodie. I'm so glad I got reintroduced to this. So I did a sponsorship with Lancome. They resent a bunch of their products. One of those products being the blur and go. And a lot of you commented on that video and you were like, that really blurred your pores. And I remember loving this product. It's essentially just a pore blurring primer, but in a stick form. So you just rub it on your teaser Zone and then kind of use your fingers to melt it in. You don't really have to, but I do. It doesn't have a scent. It doesn't leave a residue and it really does blur your skin. So I'm back to loving this top drawer. I used to use this so much like way like years ago and I must have went through it or it expired and then I never got it again. So I'm so happy to have this in my collection because that is my biggest issue is my pores right around my nose. And I've noticed when I speak, they really show up like the way my face moves you know how some people have like smile lines deep um, under eye bags or whatever my thing is when I speak my pores show up because of the way that my face moves and it really is something that bothers me I guess so this has helped a lot and I'm so glad to have it back because I remember really loving it so when we did the uh, sponsorship together I was like yeah add that on because I really wanted to use it again and I'm so glad to have it you guys noticed as well I just think this is a great product I also have a drugstore product that I'm loving and this is from CoverGirl. This is their clean, fresh powder. My friend Cheryl had told me about this, that she really liked it. So I went ahead and picked mine up off of Amazon. I have the shade 120 Fair, but this is just for a touch up for me, but I'm using this quite a bit. I can use it to set under my eyes in my T-zone or touch up. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and just use it kind of right 
on my pore area and drag it down. This is a really nice powder. Almost reminds me of the Makeup Forever powder. I don't know if it has the coverage of the Makeup Forever just because I haven't used this by itself. Like I've used it just over my foundation. So I don't know if it has the coverage of the Makeup Forever because that velvet powder is like really high coverage. But it has the same kind of feel and texture to it. It's not as creamy as a Charlotte Tilbury or the J Cat. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit drier, but it's quite smoothing, which is what I look for. But I've been really impressed with this. Again, top drawer sitting with my other powders. So I wanted to mention it. Speaking of powders, I am in love with this Haley's Beauty powder. The more I use it, the more I fall in love with it. I used it today to set my entire face. I bake under my eyes and then pull it down around my nose. Very smoothing. Again, smoothing over those pores, which is a big problem for me. It doesn't disrupt my foundation. It doesn't make it white or too dark. So this is the Retouch Perfect Powder, Perfecting Powder, Loose Setting Powder. This reminds me texture-wise and finish-wise almost of the Nakia Joy Powder. A similar feel, like just similar in terms of how thick they are. This is not as thick as a Laura Mercier setting powder, but it's also not as thin as a one size. It's kind of right in the middle, but I have been just adoring these products and they're so affordable. So I wanted to mention this because this is giving my Huda Beauty a run for its money. That's my other like top drawer favorite, like favorite, favorite. I also like the one size, but I have a mini one. But right now I keep kicking back and forth between the Haley's Beauty and the Huda Beauty. The Huda Beauty is a little bit heavier. It's more like the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, just a little bit thicker, more of a baking powder. This is a little bit thinner, more like the Nakia Joy, but I've been loving this. Speaking of Haley's Beauty, I have one more product. I honest to God, cannot get over how much I love this. The more I use it, the more I'm like, yes, for every day or just for full glam like today. So I'm wearing it right now. This is the Reset Liquid Matte Foundation in the shade 3.25. This lasts all day and it's smoothing and it has coverage. So this was like a medium buildable to full coverage. This is great for every day. It's great under a mask. I just really love it. It kind of reminds me of the Too Faced Matte, the new matte Born This Way. This is a little bit different, but it gives us kind of similar finish, similar coverage, similar wear. So I've really been impressed with this. The more I use it, I love it. It's great with a sponge. It's great with a brush. I've just been really impressed. And this is technically, I mean, drugstore pricing, Haley's Beauty is. So I highly recommend checking them out. If you have skin like me or you like my recommendations for complexion products for smoothing or whatever, I think you'd really enjoy this. So next I want to talk about some hair products. I have three things to talk about. The first one being this texturizing foam. It's a mousse essentially. And if you would have told me to put a mousse in my hair, I would have been like, no, I don't have curly hair. I don't want a crunchy feel, but this has done really well for my hair in terms of helping me keep a curl. This is the light texturizing foam from Sexy Hair. I got mine off Amazon and I liked that it said light texturizing, so it's not going to be heavy. It's not gonna make your hair tangly. So I just pump out a couple pumps, like one pump go through my hair and then another pump through the ends. And it really does help give my hair a little bit of texture. I have such fine hair that I cannot hold a curl. My hair hair is so fine. My stylist, when she bleaches me, she's like, your hair is so healthy, which is great. I don't want my hair to break, but I can't get it to style. Like when I see people curl their hair and it stays for four days, hell no, in my dreams. But with this and a couple other products I'm going to talk about, I can actually get my curls to stay for three days, which is insane. Like that just doesn't happen to me. So I've been really enjoying this. I believe it was like 10 bucks off Amazon. So I just put it in damp hair. I used it today. It just gives me a little bit more volume and grit so that I can work with my hair. Even though my hair is not curled today, I like the texture it gives my hair. If you have super limp, fine, silky hair that just lays flat, definitely check this out. I read reviews before I purchased this and they were all great. So I went ahead and got it and I'm very happy with it. Another product that's really been helping me again. So I'll use that mousse, dry my hair, and then I've been going in with the Amica The Shield Anti-Humidity Spray. This gives your hair a little bit of grit again. So if I really want my curls to last, if I'm gonna go through honestly anymore and curl my entire head, it's time consuming, right, for me to do that because I have a lot of hair, it's just very fine. So I'm going to take the time to make it last. I spray this on each section, so I'll make a section, just hit it one time with this, and then curl my hair. 
this does help. This has heat protection in it, which is another bonus. Gives you a little bit of grit, holds your curl, but also is heat protectant. It's kind of like a three in one. And I really, really have been enjoying this. I'm about halfway through. This is something that I would definitely repurchase because it really does help keep that hold. So this, the mousse, and then the curling iron, I found my dream team, so let's talk about the curling iron. So this curling iron I invested in because I was so sick of my hair just like falling flat right after I curled it. I used to be able to hold a curl more, but I think it's because I used to dye my own hair at home, so it was a little more damaged, whereas now I go to a professional, so it is very healthy, but, I was reading reviews, reading reviews, and I saw this T3. Now I've heard of T3 and people loving it, but I've also seen some reviews not so good on Sephora, Ulta, whatever. So I saw this new one, single pass curl one inch curling iron. And I actually prefer a curling iron just because I'm lazy, y'all. I don't wanna hold both hands up if I can only use one. This iron is absolutely incredible. It had all five-star reviews. Looking at it right now in Sephora, it has 17 reviews, which I know is not a ton, but they're all five-star. It just said that it holds a curl perfectly, and I have to agree. This curls my hair and holds a curl better than any curling iron I've ever tried. This was pricey, but for me it's worth it, and now I'm like gonna go through all my other curling irons and just start decluttering because seriously, this is the only one I will need. I cannot tell you how shocked I was when I used the mousse and then I used this. I did use the Amica as well, but using those three together, I curled my hair and then I put it in a pony, went about my day. The next morning I woke up and my hair was still curled. I'll put a, a picture on the screen because I actually took some photos for Instagram later that afternoon. That was second day hair. For me, that doesn't happen. Like it just doesn't happen. I've seen other people recommend T3, but this was my first experience with the brand and I have been just blown away. Top drawer for me now, like, I don't even want to reach for another curling iron. So my next favorite, I've mentioned before, but y'all, I just had to mention again because I cannot get over this product. This is such an interesting product, and when I first mentioned this, I was kind of like nervous or like, I don't know, I just felt a little bit weird like explaining it, but so many of you guys DM me saying you got it and you love it, and it's from a brand called Panty Cakes. So you're like, what? Essentially, it's a personal care enhancer, and it smells amazing. So essentially, what I do with this is I use it after I shave my bikini area, like my pubic area, my legs, my armpits if I'm dry. It's coconut oil based, but it smells so good. Like it smells like cake. First of all, please do not put this up there. <laughs> like I would not put anything up there. You're self-cleaning. You don't need to do that. I know this is like TMI, but if you're getting sexy with your man or your girlfriend or whatever. So it's just like a hydrator. You can mix it in with your lotion, whatever you want to do, and just put it in your intimate areas, not up there, just around the area. And it just makes you feel good. Like it lingers. I can smell it all day. I don't know. For me, it's like self-care. It just makes me feel good. It's like kind of a fragrance, but really lingering lotion hydrating. So I have just fallen in love with this product. I don't wanna be without it. You want something that smells delicious and lingers, but also moisturizes your skin, highly recommend checking this out. So next up, I was talking to my friend Cheryl. <laughs> Again, I feel like I say that all the time, but we really do bounce off each other favorites and stuff that we're loving. She was reading over some Bath & Body Works plugins. She's like, I need some new plugins. So she said, she came across this one and she was like looking up the notes and people were saying that it kind of had a Baccarat Rouge scent. If you don't know what Baccarat Rouge 540 is, it's like a cult favorite, expensive perfume. It's unisex, but it's so gorgeous. I recently bought it myself. Very, very pricey. Like this was like 200 bucks. So this has a cult following. There's been a lot of like replicas or similar scents, but she said they had plugins that people were saying smelled like Baccarat. So she was like telling me and I was like, oh no, no. I was like, I want my house to smell like Baccarat because like the candle for this scent is like a hundred bucks for one candle. I was like, okay. So I went on Bath & Body Works and I bought like 15 plugins. It's called In The Stars, okay? This, Smells like freaking Baccarat, you guys. I'm not kidding. I plugged it into my house. Well, first I smelled it and I texted her immediately and I said, I'm definitely getting Baccarat. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close. I was like going through my house getting whiffs of Baccarat and I was like, oh, I'm ordering more of these. If you want your house to smell like Baccarat or if you've never smelled Baccarat and you're like interested and kind of intrigued, check out In The Stars. I think they have a bunch of stuff. She said they have like hand lotion and whatever. I just went for the plugins, but I will link it down below. Highly recommend. Okay, so my next favorite is something that I've mentioned on Instagram, but I've never talked about on my YouTube, and I realize a lot of you don't have Instagram. 
I've been eating these protein bars for so long. I have tried Weight Watchers back in the day and that's how I heard about them. And now I just basically try to eat as healthy as I can even though I failed miserably <laughs> over the holiday, but that's another story. So these are my favorite protein bars. I have a code with them because I love them so much after ordering them for literally years. So Candy Cane Brownie is one of their newer ones and I almost died when I tried this. I usually am not like a peppermint chocolate girl. Like I like it, but I'm more of like a caramel peanut butter kind of girl. These are incredible. I was like raving about these, so let me show you. This one is 150 calories, 17 grams of protein, and they're all kind of chocolate covered. So they have some milk chocolate, they have dark chocolate, and then they have white chocolate. I don't like dark chocolate generally, but I find that this is not like a bitter taste. Okay, so here's the outside of candy cane brownie. So it's 150 calories. You can heat them up, you can put ice cream on them. They really taste to me like a candy bar. So here is a close up of what it looks like. So it has that peppermint candy on top. And then the inside is like, I don't know, like this chocolate brownie goodness. These are so Good, I cannot even tell you. So Built Bar sent samples out to their affiliates and I literally ate the whole box. I think they sent like six and then I reordered three boxes of 18. Like I literally am obsessed. But then they sent out a new flavor and they had some that I don't like. Like they have raspberry, cherry. I like more like true peanut butter, caramel, chocolate. That's kind of the sweets that I go for. I'm a cookie dough type of bitch, okay? Like cookie dough ice cream is one of my favorites. I could eat cookie dough like literally by the batter. Like it's my thing. So they have this new dark chocolate cookie dough bars. And I was like, okay, I hope this is good because I've tried some, like they had a white chocolate cookies and cream, which I thought was good, but it wasn't like my favorite. I ate the bars they sent me but I didn't like rebuy it whereas with the candy cane I bought three boxes of 18 like I stocked up on those and I just bought three boxes of this today this is phenomenal it has chunks of cookie dough in it so it's 150 calories 15 grams of protein okay so this is what the bar looks like and those chunks are literal cookie dough and then breaking this up it has that like Kind of like a musketeer's center, but you can see right there the chunks of cookie dough. Oh my god. This is my favorite flavor. Wow. To me, this one tastes like a brown sugar three musketeers with cookie dough chunks. I don't know how they do it. It's so good. So I'm just thoroughly impressed specifically with these two new flavors. Like I hope they become permanent. I will leave my code if you wanna get 10% off. They usually do sales though. So they'll do like 15% off and then you can stack my code on top of that. So you can get like 25% off, which I think they're doing today. So definitely stack my code on top of whatever sale they're doing. But I have one every day. Sometimes I have two. Highly recommend these bars. So my last two favorites are actually clothing items and these are things I wear literally like all the time. And I never share my like favorite clothes with you, I guess, cause you guys only see me, you know, from my chest up. I bought these on a, just a whim just to try. So I have been using the period panties from NYX and I use the thongs. So I bought a couple of them in nude and black and I use them basically to, you know, wear when I'm on my period if I'm heavy and I don't wanna worry, like I don't like to wear pads pads or what are they called? Panty liners. Like that's like literally hell on earth for me. Like I just don't like that. I'm a tampon wearer. I can't get down with the cup. Like for some reason I'm just like inserting it is like if they had an applicator, but for me, I'm like, I just can't, you know, get up in there and do it. You know what I mean? I've tried, <laughs> but it's just not for me. So I have these thongs from NYX and also there's a brand called Thinks and I've really liked them just because if you're out and about, you just don't have to worry about leaks because they're basically like protection. You can also wear them overnight without wearing a tampon or anything like that. They have different levels. You know when you're on your first few days of your period and you're like cramping and bloated and you're just like, heavy and you just feel like shit to be honest that's me the first few days so i bought these they're called the wonder short this is the print that i got but i also did get black i'll have to put like a photo on the screen so you can see but they have this really nice band on them so they don't dig in and they're basically like little boxer briefs but they have period protection so i don't want to get like too much into it but it has kind of like a lining so that you can sleep in these. You don't have to wear a tampon or a pad depending on how heavy you are. And they're just so comfortable. Like they're so comfortable that 
I started buying them and wearing them just for like when I'm not on my period, just to wear these. So I just wear these with no underwear to bed. I got a large, it's a little bit like roomy on me. So I probably could go down to a medium. So I would say they run a little bit big. Um, and the waistband is just so nice because it doesn't dig in. I have sweatpants that are high waisted that kind of dig in, or a lot of times if I'm sleeping with sweatpants, I feel like I'm sweating and I'm uncomfortable. These are just perfect. They're perfection to me. If you're looking for something to lounge around, especially because we're at home a lot, I was just like, you know what? I want something comfortable when I'm on my period. Like why do I need to wear thong or whatever around my house when I'm like on my period and I feel like shit like the first few days? Also, I've tried other period panties like briefs and stuff and they just, I don't like them. This feels comfortable to me. I think I have five or six pairs now and they're not cheap. I started with one and then I bought a couple more and then I bought a couple more I think on Black Friday, but I'm wearing these all the time. Ian says they look like um, volleyball shorts, like from high school. He's like, it looks like you're wearing volleyball shorts. That's what they look like. They're actually cute and the black ones are just really discreet and whatever. Even if I'm not on my period, I'm like wearing these all the time around the house because they're just so comfortable and I like to sleep in them. My last favorite is another clothing item as well. And this is from Urban Outfitters. So essentially it's like a seamless kind of tank top bralette. Again, I'll put a picture on the screen. I have them in a large. I probably could have got a medium, but I wear these all the time around the house. Listen, we're in the no bra gang here, okay? Like I am not wearing a bra most days. If I am, it's a sports bra. Right now I have a skims bra on. Like I'm over the underwire padded life. You know what I mean? I'm trying to wrangle these in. I don't care about like push up or like whatever anymore. Like I feel like once I hit 30, I was like, free the nipple okay so these are so comfortable i have them in black they have a ton of colors and they have different you know styles like a scoop neck or whatever i like this one which is the v-neck i can wear this with no bra it's not see-through so i can wear it like around people if i want to put like a hoodie on or whatever i can wear it under t-shirts it's just so comfortable and for some reason because it's seamless it kind of keeps the girls somewhat locked and loaded you know like not all the way but somewhat to where I can go around throughout my day and not wear a bra and feel fine. To be fair, I have like a D cup. I don't have like, you know, like a triple D. So if you're packing a lot more heat than me, then maybe, you know, you need like a little bit of more protection underneath. But I bought, again, one of these, fell in love, bought like four more. So these are top drawer literally most of the days. I'm wearing this. I'm wearing those shorts. I'm wearing Lululemons. I'm wearing joggers. Like, I live in this shit. So I wanted to mention it because it's just something that I've fallen in love with so much so that I bought multiples. I don't mention clothes a lot, but I think I'm going to start doing it just because I know you guys are like me and you're looking for like comfort and flattering clothes. And these are like my top picks. Okay. So now that we've gone over all of my favorites, I feel like I had a lot, but I really did. That's why I wanted to film this because I was like, oh my God, I just found so many things that I've been really enjoying. Let's start off with this for my fails. Absolutely no. This is from Bath and Body Works, the shapeable soap. So I like to buy their moisturizing body washes the most. To me, they're just, they're hydrating. They smell really good. They have different scents. They come in a big thing. So I thought, let me try this, shapeable soap. So essentially it's like a mousse, right? This is horrible. Like how do you fuck up body wash? Cause they did it, right? It's so dry and it doesn't stick to your skin. I was anticipating almost like a shaving cream where it like really fluffs up like a mousse and then it sticks to your skin and lathers and really hydrates. This comes out in a big glob and then it's almost like so dry that it just poofs away. Like it won't stick to the skin to even cleanse your skin. And I feel like I needed like a huge mound of it just to do like one part of my body because it just wouldn't spread. I don't know, I don't know how you fuck up body wash. Like how? I don't know. It's so bad that I can't even use it. And that, I don't know if that's ever happened to me. Like usually if a body wash is like whatever, I just like go through it. I might try to use this to shave my legs, but it's so damn drying that I feel like I don't even want to use it for that. So if anybody tried this, because literally I tried like three different times in the shower. Even when I got the shower, I didn't smell it. Like there was no lingering scent. Like it literally was just a dud for me and I'm, I regret buying it. <laughs> so my next dud is something that I was really excited about until I got it. This is the new Too Faced Peach Bloom Color Blossoming Lip and Cheek Tint. I don't understand this product. So I thought this was going to be like a liquid blush or lip product, whatever, like hydrating. This this is like a lip stain jelly, right? There's barely any pigment, okay? So I was like, all right. So I tried it on my lips, like I'm rubbing it in with the applicator and it gives you a light 
pink tint. I tried it on my lips and it actually dried my lips out. Like they felt like they were gonna crack. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be a no. And it didn't give me much color. You know I like a lip stain and it didn't give me really anything, like a tiny little pink stain, I guess, but my lips felt so dry. Using this over my powdered foundation is an absolute no. I would only use this on my lips, but even then I feel like I need like heavy balm over or under it. And for me, it's just not worth it to get a little bit of a tint for it to just dry my lips out so much. Actually like hurt, like I was like, I need balm. So for me, this is a pass, unfortunately. And my last product, I hate to mention this, but I, I really have not found one product from this line that I love. And I'm so bummed about it because first of all, I love Patrick Ta. That brand just kills it for me. I'm wearing his blush. I just love that. You guys know my love for his brand. So when Makeup by Mario said he was doing a brand, I was so excited. I was like thinking it was gonna be kind of like Patrick Ta's. I bought a lip gloss from the Makeup by Mario. I already decluttered it. Like it was nothing special. I have the eyeliners I never reach for. Nothing is like really blowing me away, but this product is such a disappointment. This is the Master Secret Glow. This is basically like a clear balm gel that you're supposed to put all over your face or your lids to give you that glow. First of all, it doesn't give you much of a glow and it lifts your foundation and moves it, which he said it didn't. And I'm like, well, but it does. This is so incredibly sticky which one of the things it says is it's not sticky. I mean, it is stickier than like Vaseline. I don't know if you can hear that or see that, but it's very sticky. So to market it as not sticky, I'm kind of like, what? If you put this on your face, your hair is gonna get stuck in it. If the wind's blowing, I wanna show you a swatch of this on my hand. I mean, you could use a lip gloss. Like you could literally use a lip gloss. Imagine putting a Lancome Juicy Tube on your cheeks. That's that's what this is. I just will never ever ever use this and I'm just sad overall that there's really been nothing from the brand that's really worked for me. All right guys, so that is everything for my favorites and fails. I know I had a lot of stuff. Let me know if you like when I talk about like clothing, food, skincare, hair care, more than just makeup because a lot of the times I don't have 15 makeup products, but I have other products that I've been enjoying. So let me know down below. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.